my friends, this video is probably going to be the most rock concert-like video that I've ever posted. And you probably have no idea what I mean by that. Basically what I mean is that the sun is going down. Like every perfect rock concert, the first half of it is gonna have the sun, and then the sun is slowly gonna go down and it's gonna end in the dark. I'm so excited. <laughs> so it's gonna be dark and it's gonna be light. Like something I know. Like an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> Have you ever heard a segue that good? Let's go. Today we are checking out Ice Cream Sandwich. This is one of the most requested channels that you guys have wanted me to look at for a long time now and I'm gonna do it. I always love looking at new channels, but we are going to do what we do best. We are going to look at the essential viewing. We are gonna look at their most viewed videos ever to see what all the fuss is about. When this video is done, you need to make sure you check out their channel and support them. They're the ones who did all the hard work. I was just here saying silly things and doing silly memes. So people, let's start with number one. Hurt. Loving can hurt sometimes. All right, let's do it. Hurt. Three, two, one, go. I'm online looking at the rate of bone fractures in the United States and it says here on this very fancy website that approximately 6.8 million Americans break a bone each year. Considering the population wow. of the United States is about 300 million, that That's gives us about roughly 2%. 2%. two out of every 10 Americans break their bones annually. And that means that eight out of every 10 Americans don't break their bones. What? No, wait, what? That's not true. Bro, you got the numbers wrong. That approximately 6.8 million Americans 6 .8 million. break a bone each year. Considering the population of the United States is about 300 million. That makes it 2%, not two out of 10. That's not correct. Bro, no. Guys, please, am I insane? I don't think I'm insane right now. I think that his most popular video of all time starts with incorrect information. No! It's okay, it's okay, he's got this, he's gonna pull through. Two out of every 10 Americans break their bones annually. And that means that eight out of every 10 Americans don't break their bones annually and I have never broken my bone so that means by the law of transitivity I am eight out of every, every 10, 10 Americans. Americans millions of people in the United States alone are breaking their bones and having to deal with unimaginable pain and I consider myself really lucky to have never had to go through that pain that terrible just horrible terrible terrible Horrible pain. How much does breaking a bone actually hurt? I actually want to know. I've never broken a bone. I feel like the worst part of breaking a bone is just the shock of it happening. You know, I think I've like fractured toes and st done stuff like that, but I've never like broken a bone and I, I need to knock on wood. I need to knock on wood. Just a sec. I have not broken a bone at this point in my life. So I don't want to assume. What I do know is I've had certain other kinds of pain, like getting tattoos on various parts of my body and inflammatory, inflammatory bowel disease which hurt probably five times as much as getting tattooed. So I like to think I've experienced a solid amount of pain, but I don't know what breaking a bone feels like. But I have hurt myself, not on purpose, but just because I'm being an idiot or because I'm near an idiot. That idiot is also <laughs> usually me. I've stubbed my toes, I got hit in the face with a shoe, fallen off of a skateboard, fallen down stairs. I've fallen down the stairs more than I'd like to admit. One time with an entire plate of spaghetti, oh, no. but that was more of an emotional pain than a physical one. So <laughs> I've never broken a bone, but the worst pain I've had to deal with was in college on an inflatable obstacle course. I was spending the better part of an absolutely gorgeous day inside when I hear fun coming from outside Ooh. my window. I go to see what it is. And I see all of these inflatable bouncy castles and oh, obstacle courses outside on the mall, which is like the main area of the school. Near the end of the year when finals happen, the school rents out this third party entertainment company yes, to blow up all these it. obstacle courses and games for the students to play on so they can unwind for finals, which makes sense. And it's really nice. And it's a lot better than some half hearted email about how not to <laughs> let finals get to your head. This was instead yep. a really nice thing for the school to do. It was actually really nice. Okay. Uh, we. It was 
was nice. Okay, we got it. It was nice. This is actually a nice thing for the school to do. It's better than this other thing, like bad emails. This was actually really nice. What they did was nice. And it's really nice. A really nice thing for the school to do. It was actually really nice. What they did was actually really nice. Yeah, okay. It was nice. Wait, did you say how old you were at this point? Are these like adult college students? Are these high school students? Middle school students? Elementary? The worst pain I've had to deal with was in college. Because the bouncy castles, definitely the experience changes based on your age drastically. If you're looking at emails, you're probably not six-year-olds. They had bouncy castles, an obstacle course, and they had one that you had to do like this. What? I don't know how to <laughs> explain it. It's not important. What is important is the obstacle course because that's where all of my friends are hanging out. As I'm looking out the window, I can see that they're taking turns racing each other through the obstacle course to see who's faster. Clearly, they were having a blast and I wanted to have some blast. blast. So I went outside to go meet them. I go outside and meet up with my friends and say that I want to race them. And we have a really fun time racing for most of the afternoon. And during this, I'm actually winning most of the races. Oh, you see, yes. I had an advantage. While most people are fast or strong, my body is wiggly, which is perfect <laughs> for an inflatable obstacle course environment. Perfect. I can get around and over and through most any obstacle with relative ease. Are you sure you might not be part octopus, sir? Have y'all ever seen an octopus fitting into crazy stuff? I was amazed by my pet rats. I had a few different cages for my pet rats, actually. And when my current boys were really young, when they were still babies and they were still growing, I had a cage for them where the bars were just a little bit too far apart. And I was like, is it safe for them to be in this one or can they escape? And they never escaped. But when they were still babies, when I would try to play with them and they were terrified, there were a couple times when they went from outside of the cage to jumping and squeezing back between the bars that were like that far apart. And I was blown away that they could do that. Rats are definitely wiggly. So anyways, you might be part octopus or uh, rat. My G. Both would be incredible. This allowed me to get a pretty big head about winning because I was doing it a lot. The day was wrapping up and inflatable things were starting to be taken down. But I Aww. wanted one more race because I was on a winning high. One for the road, you know? The obstacle course was like this. Start, get over some bumps, dive what through a What could possibly hole, go wrong? some sideways pillars, then climb up a wall, and then slide down the other side, and whoever touches the bottom platform first wins. So the race starts, and that's exactly what I go through. Over the bumps, through the hole, sideway pillars, climb up the wall. And at this point, I'm pretty far ahead of my roommate. With the extra time I've gained, I decided I was going to be flashy. So Ooh. I prop myself up. Jump. And oh, he's going to jump. Sliding no. down. No, don't I... do it. Yeah, I've done this too. <laughs> Have you ever jumped down a bouncy slide? People fall fast. You accelerate in the air really fast. Gravity is scary. Just in case anyone didn't know this information about gravity, it's scary. It can hurt. Gravity can be painful. So anyways, be careful with gravity. A message from the government of Robert. What ended up happening was the inflatable structure was not fully inflated. There was a hole in it somewhere. So there was a lot oh, of give to the inflatable course. No. And because I had jumped off of the top instead of sliding down, all of my inertia when I landed on the bottom platform punched through to the ground and did nothing to stop my momentum. I ended up landing all of my weight onto one of my ankles and it really hurt. Now, you I've didn't never break broken it? a bone before, but in this moment, it? I sincerely thought that I had. The guy who was taking down the obstacle course, like, peeked around the corner and was like, you good? And because I'm an <laughs> idiot and embarrassed, I was like, yeah. And he was like, cool. And then <laughs> left. I was absolutely writhing in pain, though. My friends had to drag me aside and lay me down because I couldn't stand up on my own. Thankfully, I have really good and loving friends, and one of them was actually a practicing nurse. Okay, so you were adults. Okay, okay. This was adult bouncy castle fun. Okay, this changes my perspective. So she went and grabbed a kit of a nurse thing and looked at my good, foot good. and told me to go to the doctor. I agreed, but because I couldn't exactly stand right yet, we decided to wait for the crippling pain to subside a little bit before we left. 
So to pass the time, my good and loving friends made jokes at my expense. <laughs> Eventually, we do end up getting to the doctor, and the doctor explains that we should probably x-ray it just to make sure that there's no hairline fractures or something yes. like that. To yes. which I agree. So we go and get my foot x-rayed. <laughs> And they determined my foot was fine. Not broken, wow. just a sprain. Which is really hard to believe because of how much pain I had to go through. Also, it's been like three years and it still hurts. Ow. Wait, what? What is a sprain? My whole life, I've always known that like, you have like a sprain, a fracture, and a break. And obviously a sprain is not as bad as a break, but it hurts a lot. I've sprained things before. Do they ever teach you what spraining something is? What is a sprain? A sprain is a stretching or tearing of ligaments. Oh. Yeah, okay, I've sprained my ankle and I've definitely sprained my toe or fractured it. Ah, this is making me cringe. I'm thinking now about times when that's happened. Hey, hey, guys, you see? The rock concert thing is happening. This is gonna get iller and iller as we go. I'm excited. Also, it's been like three years and it still hurts. Ow. But they insisted that it was just a sprain, so never broken a bone. So that's the worst I've ever been hurt without breaking anything. In one hand, I have the pain I've been talking about, spraining my ankle, and that hurt. That was really bad. In the other hand, I have pain I've never experienced before, which is breaking a bone. Actually, really breaking a bone. Knowing what this felt like, I don't know if I could survive this <laughs> pain. But there's only one way to find out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I definitely have seen a lot of people break bones and just go into shock and like not really experience the pain to like that much of a degree. You know what I mean? It's like, obviously it's painful no matter what, but I think a lot of people, when they see a broken bone, they go into shock and they like stop feeling pain as much. Quick editor note. I've broken a bone. Robert's technically right with the shock part. It doesn't actually start hurting until the moment you start looking at it. At least in my experience, when I broke my arm when I was a kid, I didn't feel any pain until literally the moment that I looked at it. Up until that point, I just felt that, huh, my arm feels very limp. And then unfortunately I looked down to see my arm bent halfway at my forearm. Yeah, that was fun. So honestly, dude, because you didn't break the bone, it might have hurt more, honestly. It's entirely possible. I'm not trying to minimize the suffering of people who have broken bones. I'm just curious, okay? I don't know. Before I go, uh, a couple things. When I was editing this, my cousin discovered an old home video of all of us playing on a slide as kids. Just really quick, let's um check it out. This is check me. Out. Look at those big old peepers. Oh, the same thing! <laughs> what is wrong with me? This was a deep-seated problem oh, from childhood. No. I can't operate slides, I guess. Just get up on the top and... Oh, I'm not known no. for my intelligence. Moneymaker's up here. You can also subscribe to my channel, and if you do, in the next 10 minutes, I will eat this entire... Ice cream sandwich. Other subscriber. <laughs> All right, you got it, bro. You got it, bro. Boop that sub button and boop that like. We're gonna keep it going. But I do wanna say really quick, make sure you have booped the subscribe button on Ice Cream Sandwich's channel as well as mine. I do not know Ice Cream Sandwich's first name, so until I figure that out, I'm calling them Ice Cream Sandwich. That was fun and thought provoking. Yeah, if I was a parent and I saw my kid jumping off of a slide like that, I would probably try to teach that out of the right away rather than filming them and watching the potential terror that could ensue. But anyways, they raised a successful animator, so your parents must have done something right. Here's one I'm really excited for because it reminds me of our introduction to the odd ones out. Bad customers! Bad customers, just like the video. You know what I'm saying? Where did you work, my dude? Anyways, people, let's do this. Bad customers. Tres, dos, uno. Go. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Do I look like somebody who likes to work? Or do I look like somebody who likes to eat pizza like a cookie? Personally, I think it's kind of weird how much we're expected to work in high school. Like, you have to go and serve people McDoubles for four hours and then go home and suffer X. Right, that's a right. lot of work. Does anybody else think that's crazy? Or am yeah. I crazy? I am crazy. <laughs> I really did not want to get a job. When I was growing up, I don't like to work. I just like the money. But if you want, <laughs> go to the movie theater with your buddies. You gotta have the cash. The cash. One ticket, your total is $20.
Yeah, no, that's so true. Working a job while going to school is really hard. And yo, shout out to anyone watching this video who does that. Any of you guys who watch my videos who both go to school and work a job, kudos to you. I've done the same thing. Dude, when I started my YouTube channel, I was going to school, I was doing 12 hour night shifts at a factory and doing my videos at the same time. You wanna know how much I saw my friends? Zero! You want to know how many video games I was able to play? Zero! I literally did nothing but work all the time. It was crazy. It got me to where I am today, I guess, but that's crazy. For my first job, I wanted to avoid the food service because I feared people would be a little bit more abrasive when it comes to their meals. Yeah. You'll find good customers anywhere, but I just feel like when food's involved, things get yeah. a little hairy. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want people yelling at me about onions. I don't care about onions. I ended up working somewhere that's not food, which I will show you through example. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, kidnapping service. <laughs> Good. That's right. My very first job was here at the UPS store. Okay. It was not really that great. Just a regular job. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could do a job like that. Maybe I could, because I, I got so into my factory work, even though that was literally the most boring job that a person could ever possibly do. I don't know. <clears throat> when I turned the age of 16, my dad helped me network with the local UPS store and get me a job, which thank you, dad, for helping me do that, because at that age, I was Next not up. the proper candidate for being an employee. Thank well, you, working dad. there, I met a lot of really nice people and a lot of really cool people, but when you work in retail, it's impossible to not meet some um, Weirdos. How yep. would I say this in a nice way? Crazy people. Outliers. So one time this uh, woman and her daughter came into the store and they said they needed to ship something. When you ship something out of the UPS store, you got to ask a bunch of questions like, where is it going? Is it going internationally? Do I need to be worried about what's in this box? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going through these questions and entering information into the computer as I did with any customer. But apparently that was a wrong thing to do because she <laughs> unfolded her cane, which apparently just turned Whoa. into a chair. Sit down and says, this is going to take a while. Excuse me. Excuse you me. You could say a million things to me. Why not compliment me? Why not say, wow, Andy, your eyes look beautiful today. Oh, Andy, Andy, be Andy, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, Andy, Andy. Andy. She was shipping internationally, which means I had to do extra steps to make sure it gets there. So after a minute or so, she turns to me and says, you guys should really have the computers on our side of the desk so oh we can do it gosh. faster than you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh do you know gosh. all the rules and regulations for shipping overseas? Yeah, 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 dude. Th this entitled person. Yeah, you can't just do that. You can't just go into someone's job and tell them how to do their job. That is like the worst. But so many people do stuff like that. It is so obnoxious. Yeah, shipping things does take a while, but dude, think about what you're doing. You're making something go to the other side of the world on your command. That's not just an easy thing to do. It's gonna take a second and it's not Andy's fault. Do you know how this computer works? No. no. The worst part about root customers is that you can't say anything despite if they're wrong or not. The customer yep. is not always right and the person who coined that famous phrase was very wrong and probably it was yeah. also a customer. I think if you're mean to retail workers, <laughs> they get to yell back at you. Or at the very least, you get to tell them that they're mean and make them leave. You're mean! <laughs> I've only ever encountered these kinds of people at work, and I've never seen them in the wild. But if I did, and I didn't have to keep my mouth shut because I didn't work there, then I'd go right up to them and say, you're mean! <laughs> Get him! Honestly, that's kind of the same thing as like mean comments on YouTube. It's like people can just comment anything they want and if you respond to it, you're supposed to be the bigger person and not respond. So this person can say anything about you that they want to, but you're not supposed to be able to say anything back to this faceless anonymous person. It's kind of the same thing as when you're working a job and the customer can be horrible, but you're not allowed to say, hey, you're horrible. But it happens so much. You're not allowed to do anything about it, though. It's it's the worst. Then there was this other time where this guy tried to ship drugs. That day was oh, particularly no. slow. Nobody was coming in, and it was just me and my coworker Tony. Tony and I got along really well because uh, neither of us liked to work. I want to go home. <laughs> <gasps>
Me too. <laughs> so much in common. At one point, a guy comes in to buy just one single box. Simple, okay. easy. He's in and out in a jiffy. But five minutes later, he comes back in. Same box, but now something's packed up inside it. I saw the box and how he packed it. And he did the thing where he kind of fold the flaps on top of each yeah. other, which is a problem because then it just falls out if it's not yep. taped. Can I get a description of what's in this box? It's uh, It's private. Uh, I mean, we just need a general description. Like, yeah. uh, is it food, perishable? Oh, uh, it's microchips. Okay. Microchips. Now, because the box wasn't properly taped, Tony came over and was going to tape it up for me while I was helping him on the computer. But the guy stops Tony. Oh, no. Uh, I just need to retape the box really quick so it doesn't come oh, out. Oh, he's freaking shipment. out. The tape's free if that's what you're worried about. Oh, uh... Okay. He timidly oh, no. allows us to do that, which I don't really know what his end game was because we opened the box and there was... <laughs> Sir, we can't ship this. I'm no expert on illegal trade of illicit goods, but I know a thing or two about shipping and I know that drugs are... Uh, you can't do that one. <laughs> you can't... You just can't do that one. There's a lot of things you can ship drugs. You can't do that one. That is our lesson of the day. That guy must have been losing it. But microchips? Isn't microchips kind of a sus answer? Isn't that kind of a sus answer? Like, you could have said so many things. There's no way it was as heavy as microchips. You could say, like, a sweater. It's a sweater for my grandma. You know? Microchips? Is that really the least sus thing you could have said? Listen, I'm glad he got caught. I'm glad he got caught, because that's illegal. Don't do that. But still, microchips, bro? Bro, come on. Those are illegal! Uh, you can't do that one. That's on the no-go zone. We opened the box because we needed to redo the flap so we could tape it properly. So if he just came in with the oh, box no. taped, we wouldn't have known what he was shipping. There's no x-ray machine at the UPS store Don't to give see them what's any inside advice. the box. <laughs> The only missing component here was tape. More than anything, the situation just was awkward. Oh, uh, um, uh, okay. That's, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Gotta try it in new office. <gasps> Me too. Here's some advice. If you want to ship drugs, don't. Then there's this other time where this guy tried to overnight a misshapen magazine. This time I was working alone. It was a night shift. It's dark out. And this guy comes in holding a magazine. Hello, sir. I can help you at this register. Uh, oh, he's oh, just getting, he's an, getting envelope. an envelope. Okay. Probably to ship, Probably that, ship magazine. that magazine. Is he, Is he packing, packing it up, it up back, back there? there? Is he trying Is he to hide, hide something, something from me? From me? Uh, yeah. Weird. Weird. I want to go, go home. home. I like to ship this <laughs> next day air, please. When you ship like a, a piece of paper next day air, UPS has this special envelope that makes it cheaper. And I saw that he's trying to do that. So I talked to him about it. Oh, actually, uh, we have these special envelopes that cut uh, you a deal, so it's cheaper to ship next day air. He'd have to take it out of the existing envelope, though, right? Is that the issue? He, he can't do that? And then it's sus because why would you not want this deal if you're just shipping a magazine? You know? Is that what's about to happen? At first, he was hesitant about that, which is uh -huh. definitely a red flag because it was like $100 cheaper to ship through $100? the special envelope. And why wouldn't you do that? You could spend a hundred dollars on buying like i don't know five guys that's a lot of five guys <laughs> five guys good but still nobody would pass that up so it was weird that he hesitated i eventually talked him into it because i think he was like catching on that i was catching on that he was being suspicious <laughs> so i started typing in the information for him and he started to move the magazine from the envelope he picked up already to the other envelope that i offered him and while he was yep. doing this i saw that it had a big weird yeah. lump in it so uh that's another red flag two for two baby why was, Why was the magazine, the magazine bulgy? bulgy? Is he shipping Is he drugs? drugs? Oh. Oh my god, this is like a thousand dollars. Wow. What is he sending this to? What if it's the mob? Well, now Possibly. I have my fingerprints on it. Possibly. And then I sent it off. I don't want to get involved with the mob or whoever that was. I was 16, alone in this store at night, and not paid enough for it to be my problem. I guess now that I'm on the topic of illicit substance distribution, <clears throat> there was this other guy. He would always come into the store and be like, hey, I shipped a box to your store, and it's big. And we'd be like, oh, is this the one? Yeah, that's the one. Of all the other customers, this guy was very easy to deal with and really charming. But one day, a couple of other customers came in, and they're like, hello, we're the police. They asked oh, to see no. the manager, oh, and no. they talked to him and then a couple days later that guy picked up a box and then was arrested in the parking lot turns Whoa. out he was importing a lot of 
I think it was around this time that I realized I miscalculated when I passed up all those food service jobs. But then again, wow. is any retail job good enough? I don't know. I bet I would have had a better time at Five Guys. Stop eating the french fries. Anyway, hindsight's 2020. Other stuff that happened. One dude asked me if the narwhal bacon's at midnight, which is very Ugh. cringe. And Ugh. trust me, I know cringe. Oh gosh, yeah, if the narwhal bacon's at midnight bro can can you not can you not it's like if someone says that to me it's like listen i'll talk to you but i'm not gonna be happy about it also would this look doper if this light was off i'm gonna turn this light off and you let me know what you think okay that might definitely be iller than what we had before i really had a home depot box in the backdrop this whole time sick dude sick background robert and trust me I know cringe. A bunch of cheerleaders burst into the store, cheered, ran in a circle, and then left. We suspect wow. they were just trying to cause a commotion while their friends would steal things, but then realized there was nothing interesting to steal at a UPS store, and then went away. There was a guy that would often come in and try to ship bath salts, which... I, again, I'm not paid enough for that. A man wanted me to send faxes, and then when I told him the number wasn't working, he shook the paper in my face and yelled, Fax! It's not working. Fax! Sorry, no, they wanted bro. me to help him with his email because the government was hacking his email. <sighs> there was a guy that would come in a lot and tell us about word affirmation, but thought that it was literally magic and not just a self-motivator, and told us that the sounds in our voices affected atoms and quarks on the quantum level and would make things a reality. They're saying this at UPS? People are coming into your job at UPS and talking to you about manifestation? Ma'am, why... Why UPS? There are so many people who would be happy to hear about this. Maybe it doesn't need to be the UPS people. Maybe it doesn't have to be them. This might be a crazy thought. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. And told us that the sounds in our voices affected atoms and quarks on the quantum level and would make things a reality. For example, like if you just said, I have a juicy booty, I have a juicy booty, I have a juicy booty, <laughs> then it would be true. There was always the classic <laughs> handful of people that would knock on the door after we were closed and and ask if we were open. Are you guys yeah. open? No. And that's all <laughs> that I can think about. If you subscribe, I will throw this box, help me, into a volcano. Thank you yes, for helping me animate please. this video. And that's everything. Already got the subscription covered, my G. I enjoyed that. I think I liked that one more than the first one. I love bad customer stories. Maybe just because I've like gone through that already. Like I'm, I've experienced that and I'm done with it. I can like look back and laugh now. It'd probably be a lot more painful without. All right, we are going to close it off with one more bit of essential viewing. My brain is square and I'm often confused. Aren't we all sometimes? Andy! I don't know about my brain being being square, but I'll, I'll keep it real. I would venture to say that I am often confused. It happens. It happens from time to time. I'm a keep it real. I know I'm usually the picture of mental sanity, but it's true. Sometimes I'm confused. People, let's hit it. Un, deux, trois. Go. Oh, yeah. Enjoy that. <laughs> I am not a smart person, and I never have been, and I never will be, but there's a lot of people who say otherwise, and they support me, and they love me. I'd like to make something very clear to everyone who loves and supports me. Yeah, yeah. Get away from my house! <laughs> I know what I'm talking about when I'm calling myself stupid or dumb. This isn't a self-deprecating thing or a self-hate thing. It's just like one of those facts of life. Earth is yeah. round, sun is bright, and I got square brain. That's so interesting. It, there's no way for me to say this without sounding so obnoxious and stupid, but like, I've never thought I was dumb. Maybe it's because I was like put in like gifted kid schools when I was like a young age and I was literally told over and over, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. Maybe that's why I never like felt like I was like mentally lacking. But that's so interesting because obviously it takes intelligence to write a script like this and to animate something like this and to be so creative. So I find that really interesting. Like, I know there's obviously some level of Andy just being modest here, but at the same time, I would never go and just say, like, I'm unintelligent. So if he, if he truly believes that, I find that really interesting. Remember the Hurt video I did and there was, yes. like, a bunch of math in the beginning? <gasps> yes! I wrote the script for that video, recorded the audio yes! for that video, edited that audio, and then listened to the audio while I was animating over the audio. 
video. Oh, and it wasn't no. until somebody told me in the comments that I realized that my math is bad. Yeah! And I got square brain. Oh my gosh, no way! Oh my gosh, that is the moment. That is the moment right there. Oh my gosh, we literally talked about that. This is the greatest moment of the video. This is the greatest moment of the video. I cannot believe I clicked on the right video to have that moment happen right there. Oh my gosh. Okay, I am not insane. He was wrong. <laughs> Okay, okay, Andy, maybe I believe you. Maybe I believe you, but your work is still great. How did I get through school? Barely. Every time I have a misunderstanding where there really shouldn't be any misunderstanding, I've been writing it down and putting it in this list. And now I have a list of all of the times I was being dumb. So Sweet. now my stupidity is quantifiable. Look, I can, you can you see that's how many, how many times, <laughs> too many. Let's take a trip down idiot lane let's look at a couple of these pay-per-view is not oh pay-per-view pay -per <laughs> i learned this one about a year ago i was looking at some paper and thought to myself paper sounds a lot like pay-per-view pay-per-view paper view pay oh my oh my gosh paper involved instead of a tv like you would just get some papers with just pictures view it. Just of view the it. show you want to watch turns out it's something that you pay every time you view it who'd have thunk bro oh my gosh but the confidence the humility the modesty it takes to make a video like this you have to respect this you have to respect andy just exposing himself like this i really hope i got the name right i really hope i'm not calling him andy and his name is jeremiah humperdink calling someone a sweet pea is not calling them a pea of which is sweet I thought maybe people like back in the day were like, mm, yes, honey, I... <laughs> could you hand me the sugar for my peas? That's not what people <laughs> talk like in the 50s, but you get my point. Anyway, it's a flower. <laughs> Oh, Which is I didn't considerably know that. less gross. I really don't know what I was I didn't know that. Of, but when information enters my mind, it just, I don't know. What happens to it? I'm stupid. <laughs> what would a sweet pea taste like? What is that flavor? I don't know. If I had a nickel every time I was dumb, I would not have to be smart to make a lot of money. I thought for a very long time that peer pressure was pure pressure. There's water pressure, oh, air no. pressure, and then there's your friends. What do oh, you no. think my IQ is? I'm gonna tweet it. I wanna see what people say. Apple, two, okay. at least three. <laughs> One of them for each little hair poof. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh no. 2,500. At Heck least 100%. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's not wrong. Oh. Two. Jonathan. Jonathan. Big. Out, out of this, this world. Okay, we got Big it. Fruit. We gummy. got it. Oh god. Peanut. Pants. Pancakes. Guys, it's supposed to, it's supposed to be a number. Are you guys <laughs> hungry? Potato. Taking a deuce is taking a number two because oh. deuce is two in Spanish. Maybe. Maybe German. Deuce. Deuce. De I spelled it wrong. Wait a sec. It's English. Wait, it's English. <laughs> what? It's just English. Deuce is English. What? I didn't know that either. I did not know that that whole segment there. I did not know that. Also, this lighting is pretty sick, actually. I think I need to film more when the light is going away. This actually looks pretty good, not gonna lie. I'm pretty happy with this. Anyways, uh, back to this. I did not know that information. I didn't even realize that the deuce was the number two in the first place. I was like, that makes sense. I knew deuce was in tennis, but then that's 40 all. That's not two. Weird. Mushrooms are called toadstools because it's like a stool for a toad. Oh. Honestly, you could have called it anything and it would have accepted it. Oh, what? what's that? It's called salt mask <laughs> bird. Amazing. Sounds good. I'm accepting that as fact. In conclusion, I'm not got the smart. There are a lot of other people in this world that are really, really good at retaining information. A lot better than I but I'm good at other things, like this little dance.
And what's what's more important? Let's be honest. We, being intelligent, having being smart. Oh, I'm smart. Or being able to do this. What's more important in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, that's what I thought. The dance. Silver lining, now I know all of these things. And my intelligence has been improving, oh. if only a little, over time. Oh. Which isn't always the case for everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I love seeing you watch my videos. Thank you for watching. You're welcome. It's 9 one, one Yeah, he's back. And I love watching these videos. It's so much fun. Thank you for making them ice cream sandwich. You know what? I was originally intending to, when I watched this channel, to be eating an ice cream sandwich. But as fate would have it, I just moved into this apartment and the fridge and freezer don't work. What? So I literally can't have ice cream sandwiches even if I want them. So next time, if I watch ice cream sandwich again, I promise I will eat an ice cream sandwich while watching it, okay? I promise this. I know this is very important to you. This was a lot of fun. This was very different. I really like Andy's personality. He's very humble and he's very silly and I like it. You compared to how much I, I like shut up, you're so annoying! So, Ice Cream Sandwich gets my seal of approval. I am totally down to check out his stuff again. You let me know if you want to see that in the comments, but more importantly, go check out his channel right now. He works really hard on these videos. I was just the silly boy saying the silly things. Or, here's the last animation reaction we did. Check this out if you have not seen it. Or, here is a video that YouTube thinks you will like in particular. Are they right? You let me know. People, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching my stuff. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. It was a rock concert. Peace.